Welcome back everyone. This is DM Bloodworth and this is another uh, video that uh, I was asked to uh, make uh, to give you uh, some what I think is helpful hints on setting up various islands for your characters. Uh, what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to show you uh, talk about the account. So every account in, uh, in Albion on Online comes with three character slots and uh, for most of us you know when we start we have what is you know what we would term as our main character so you can see my first character here is uh, Bloodbeard he still has uh, 49 days left of uh, premium I was a legendary founder so I started with uh, three months of premium time and basically what premium time allows you to do is it allows you to uh, gain fame and you know and gathering uh, benefits uh, so you, you gain things faster uh, and it what it also does is it allows you to purchase uh, a private island uh, for your character so in order to purchase a private island you need to have at least 30 days of premium account time uh, pre-purchased so I'm gonna jump into game uh, with my main character and show you a, a few details about character islands and guild islands and and how to kind of integrate your three characters into uh, one unit that helps support the main character so you can see I have three characters Bloodbeard is my main Brack Morgan was my very first uh, alt and then uh, Bloodworth is my uh, second alt uh, most recent one that I gave premium time to so without further chatting from here I'll jump into the game so here I'm in the city of Limhurst and uh, if you bring up the city maps uh, any city you will see that there is a there is an icon uh, to show where the island uh, merchant is and you can see this uh, you know this peak this yellow icon here for the island merchant and when you click on the island merchant you can see I'm I'm basically naked and I'm just on the tier 2 starter horse and I'll explain why I did that a little bit later but so you can see you go to the island merchant and you can travel to your island and you can see my island is six out of six there are various levels um, that an island uh, can be developed through I also have my guild island um, I'm a member of the guild and the guild island itself is six out of six and then when you come down here you can toggle and see all of the other islands that you have permission to travel to and uh, when I get to the other islands I will uh, discuss those for my alts and such so my island travel to my island now it's free to travel to islands that are within the same city as your character is in so this is my island and I'll bring up the map so there is my legendary founder's house and bringing up the map you can see this is what a six out of six island offers and since I'm primarily a ranger type character yeah I have a you know a build that kind of supports that so I have my hunters Lodge uh, only tier four at this point, and, and that's because the Guild Island itself supports higher tier than that. So I didn't need to upgrade that on my own island. I have my private home, which is a tier five. Um, I haven't upgraded it to tier six just yet. And as you can see, I have the various services that my character might need at some point if um, if ever he finds himself not in a guild so 
I use swords as a primary weapon, uh, and that comes out of the Adept Warriors, um, you know, forge. I wear that the armor, which is going to come out of here. I need mounts. I need, uh, you know, the private islands can produce various types of food. I have a pasture, which I can then bring to the saddler and produce my own, uh, my own mounts should I need to. And then various refining stations. Uh, you have smelter for ore. I have a cook or butcher for animals that I might bring for butcher. I have a tanner, a mason for stonework in order to upgrade these uh, when I want to upgrade them. An adept's weaver, a uh, lumber mill uh, for making bows and other you know items that require wood. I haven't upgraded this tool maker yet. Uh, there's one on the guild island, so I don't need to. And then a journeyman's mill uh, for taking some of this, uh, you know, food supplies and, and converting it to other products. And then a cook uh, for making various potions or um, um, soups and food items. So a, a personal island is really, you know, set up to support your character um, and, and his or her personal needs. So I go back to this uh, this travel planner here and you can see I can go to the city. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my guild island. Once on the guild island, like I said uh, earlier, the guild island is also a 6 out of 6. And you can see this guild island is supporting as uh, up to tier 5 uh, equipment and gear. And here are all the trainers. So this is slightly above what my, uh, my own personal island can do. I'm not quite up to tier 6 yet, so I don't need anything... Uh, anything above tier five anyway so right now this island is producing everything that i need to at this point you could also see the the way that we set this up is that we have a a stonemason and then next to the stonemason is a house that will have laborers that you can kind of exchange the books for so when i generate books uh you know and fill books for a laborer by gathering stone and then refining stone I can bring it next door and then that gets filled up with uh, you know returns back the additional resources so for every every workstation has a house next to it uh, it's just a way that our guild decided to utilize the utilize the resources of our island Now, stepping away from this island, I'll go back to the back to the city. Here in the city, you can see the city map. It has uh, various uh, various places that can be rented uh, on a monthly basis, and then you can put various structures here. And this is where my guild actually maintains its higher tier uh, at this point up to tier six refining uh, for you know crafting items later on and so we don't need to maintain higher tiered refining or crafting on our individual guild islands or our individual uh, you know personal islands while we have these city plots So now I'm going to go back to the travel agent here, and this is this guy here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to other islands. And you can see that, you know, if you recall from the beginning, my three characters, all of their islands began with uh, the letter B. And so you can see the first one is Brack Morgan. So Brack Morgan's island is in Limhurst, so it will not cost me to travel 
to his island because it is in the same city. Now when I travel here, you can see that this island is smaller than my other, you know, personal island. And what this island uh, does or is meant to do is it's meant to provide some of the things that my primary island did not provide. So all small islands, and, and this one is a tier 3 island, so it has two gardens uh, for herbs, uh, which I did not have on my personal island. It, it does have a primary house where I keep some, uh, some laborers. Uh, it's lower tiered than my main house is. It doesn't need to be higher tiered. And then it's providing an alchemist lab and a mage's tower, which, uh, you know, I didn't have on my own personal island. Now, the way that you set these things up, and uh, I'm going to switch characters at this point so that you can see that, is I'm just going to log out of my main character. And I'm going to log into this character. So this is Brack Morgan, and he's actually on the... Um, He's actually on the other, you know, my main character's island. I'm going to bring him back to his own personal island. And you can see in the in the islands list, it'll show the, the city that you're currently in. And then there's a little red icon and your personal island will always be at the very top. Followed by your guild island. Um which will be right below that. So I'm going to travel him to the personal island. So now he's on his personal island. And before he could purchase this personal island, he had to have premium time. And since your alternate character doesn't start automatically with premium time, you have to purchase it. And like I said, you had to purchase it um, for a one month time slot in order to be able to purchase this island. But once an island is purchased and when your character's uh, when your character's premium time expires, he still keeps the island and he can still upgrade that island after the fact. You only need the one month time in order to make the initial purchase of the island. So you can see here there are, you know, I went to this icon up here, the, the crown, which is the premium status. And it gives all of the benefits of having premium status and then the subscription payment types. So I can pay $9.95 for one month. I could pay $2,500 gold for one month or I could pay 1.337 million uh, 7 million silver which is in-game currency for that same month looking at the current market and everything it is actually your cheapest route is to spend the nine dollars and ninety five cents um, because the twenty five hundred or the 1.3 million silver you know, are actually more expensive than $9.95. You, you wouldn't be able to purchase that amount of gold for $10, a, you know, a month. So we'd go to the screen and you would subscribe for that amount. I'm not going to actually do that with this character. Um, but you can see, again, this is his island. Now... The next stage, which I did with this character, was I had this character purchase a guild island. So he actually created a separate guild island for himself. 
So when I go back to this merchant over here, here's the island merchant. And you can see, for my personal island, I still have room to upgrade the island. So I could spend another 198,000 silver to increase the size of his personal island. When I switch to Guild Island, you can see that I can purchase the next stage of Guild Island for 237,000. Alright, so I'm not going to purchase this Guild Island. What I'm going to do is I'm going to travel to his Guild Island. Now the Guild Island is still in this same city, and so it will cost me nothing to get here. When you create an alternate private island or guild island, you come into here, uh, into the island control status board here, and what you do is you name your guild. And what I did was I named my guild Bloodbeard Estates. It matches the name of my main character. So when it comes time for searching, I can, you know, quickly and easily find my character's uh, name. So he truly is a support of the main character. His guild is set up inside the same city as my main character. And then this is my alt. And I'll get into how I set up my third alt. But you can see... You make each of your characters a co-owner of each of your personal and guild islands, and that way they can easily access and do everything they need to do on that island. So because this is a secondary guild island, all I did here was I set up the guild house uh, to tier 4, and that is to give me... You know, on, on this level island, you get a marketplace, you get a, a bank that is, you know, character specific. And then it has a guild hall. And what I did in this guild hall is I set this guild hall up as basically a money making machine. So I have 10 laborers and each laborer right now is a mercenary. I just began them, and so there are 10 mercenaries here, all running out to collect uh, silver. Uh, I think the first round was, you know, a little bit less than 500. So I'm going to collect today about five, uh, about 4,500 silver uh, just for the 22 hours here, all automated. So you don't have to actively do anything other than fill the books when you get the books. Now the next stage I'm going to show is setting up his guild. So in order to get the third character to join this guild because they're both on the same account, you kind of had to mess around with uh, the search feature of a guild. So when we go to the guild subs, uh, description, it's hard to find a guild by just doing the basic search feature. So uh, what another player told me to do is is to list this guild under, I believe this is the, the Turkish server and uh, expert level. And that way, when you search for a guild under the regular, you know, search for a guild icon, which I don't have because I am in a guild, uh, you can easily find, you know, Turkish servers and, uh, and, you know, the highest level, the expert level guilds. So... Now I'm going to take this character, um, I'm going to take this character offline and go back to my main character so you can see this last uh, transfer.
so this is my final alt, my, uh, my second alt. And you can see that he is on his own island. And I'll bring that up. Now, his island is actually in a different city. So his island is set up in Fort Sterling. And Fort Sterling has uh, different resources that are its primary resources. So Fort Sterling has both, um, both ore as a primary resource and fiber. And so he is going to maintain the uh, ability to refine those two uh, resources on his island specifically. I just started this island up, so he hasn't even put furniture or uh, laborers into this house, and this house still has to be upgraded. So that's just a tier, you know, it's a tier two. It's a tier two house. He does have one farm, so he can produce uh, some crops for income for this character. But for the most part, this island has been set up for a refining station uh, to be in a different city. So when I come over here, once again, he has made co-owners of my other two characters, my main character and my other alt. That way they have access to this island. When I come here, I can travel to Fort Sterling for free, because that's the city that this island is in. I can travel to the guild island that he is a member of, but because that guild island is in a different city, it would actually cost me 646 silver pieces in order to travel to there. Traveling to Limhurst, which is the other city, costs the same thing. So, I can come out here into Fort Sterling. And like I said, Fort Sterling is actually not very far away from Limhurst. So here is the city of Limhurst where my main character and my first alt is attached to, along with a uh, the guild island. And then here is Fort Sterling. And Fort Sterling has access to different resources. So you can see here that it has access to stone, fiber, and ore as opposed to, you know, the areas in and around Limhurst, which is wood, stone, and skins or hides. So having access to different resources and, and refining of different resources, and then uh, just loading up uh, an oxen full of those refined resources and traveling between one city and the next which is not you know a very long and can actually be a completely safe travel um you know actually makes sense for creating a system that is fully designed to support your main character and now i'll just log back into my main character to do this uh, wrap up And such is uh, such is what happens when you're recording in real time and not paying attention uh, completely. All right, so I'm back onto my main character. 
The reason why I stripped my main character down, you can see in his inventory he just has this tier 2 horse, is if I wanted to travel to my alt islands, the ones that are not in here, uh, in the same city. So if we wanted to go to Bloodworth's Island, you can see it's only going to cost him 79, 79 silver pieces to travel there. And I will make that payment. So now he is in Fort Sterling. And if he comes into this house here, here is a chest that he can, all of my characters share access to the chests. And he can now collect all of these things up. And then travel. And as a matter of fact, I'll do that. Um, actually, nothing's refined yet. So I'll leave this here until I look to refine it. Refined goods travel faster. Um, you can carry more of it. Uh, it's less weight uh, than unrefined. And like I said before, his personal island is always the first. His primary guild island is always the second in the list. But he can still travel to all of the other islands that he has access to. So I will bring him back to his personal island because that's where his gear is. Pay the 79. And now he is back on his island. back into his home and then he can just gear up and grab his gear and that's pretty much how you set up multiple islands uh, all for the purpose of supporting uh, your main character you know and yes there is some redundancy built into the system uh, between having access to two different guild islands and uh, city plots and you know, three different personal islands. Uh, but the, the whole point is, is that, uh, you know, they're, they're only about 20% redundant and the other 80% is giving you access to all of the services and all of the, uh, the advantages of actually running three characters for the purpose of supporting one main character. Okay. So, uh, Thanks, I hope you found this informative, and I will continue making videos as uh, requested for uh, you know, other aspects of the game that uh, new players still have some questions about. Have a good day.